Where do you go when you can't fit in? What do you do when you're living in sin? Who's gonna laugh when you're making in joke? Where do you turn when your chicken is choked? It's the We're Funny That Way Virtual Pride Special. Featuring these funny and all-around talented people, Karen Williams, Colin and Kinley Mockery and Deb McGrath, Misconception, Carolyn Taylor, Kate Rigg, Gavin Crawford, Brandon Ash Muhammad, and Martha Chavez. With musical performances by Lucas Silvera and Sean E. And special guest appearances by Andrea Martin and Leah Delaria. With your host, the founder of the We're Funny That Way Festival, Wait, I know that person. That's because it's me, Maggie Casella. He's funny, she's funny, they're funny, he's funny, I'm funny, you're funny. We're funny that way. Hey there, and welcome to We're Funny That Way, the virtual pride special. Look, if you told me when I came screaming out of the closet back in 19, <laughs> that I'd be hosting a Pride event in my living room, I would have been like, I don't think so. I'm out now. Why would I go back in? But guess what? I have more respect for a virus than I do for a homophobe with a misspelled picket sign. So here I stand. And here we are now, unable to gather for Pride events in person or the We're Funny That Way Festival, the charity event we've been doing for 19 years. So what's a queer to do? Well gather some amazing talent, and go virtual to spread some queer cheer across this great land of ours. So with that, we present our first guest. She's a comic, an activist, and a healer through her comedy institute and classes, the first out African-American lesbian comic, now doing comedy to no one. That's when we know we've made it, right, Karen? Please welcome the very funny Karen Williams. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Maggie. I really enjoy doing this. You know, I get a lot of flack, though, I have to tell you. People look at me and they say, gee, Karen, you don't look like a lesbian. And I say, of course not with my clothes on. You know, anyway, it's Pride Month. Happy Pride, everyone. I just wish that, you know, we had some other words that we could use as lesbians. Because when you think about it, gay, gay men, they get to be gay. They get to be happy. It sounds like a party. We get called something that sounds like a foot fungus. What is lesbian? Why can't we be merry? I would love to just be the gays and the merries. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? We'd be partying all the time. Besides, it would be a lot easier to come out then, wouldn't it? You could say to your mom and dad with confidence, Mom, Dad, I want to be merry. And they would hug you and be so happy for you. We were hoping that you would always be happy and gay and merry. Yeah, that just sounds like a lot of fun. Because people are always wondering about lesbians anyway. They wonder, what do we do? I have to tell you, I was on Geraldo years and years ago, 1994, when we had our lesbian chic moment. And I have to tell you, the audience was so hostile. They were screaming at us. Well, how did you know you were a lesbian? When did you become a lesbian? What do lesbians do? And I wasn't giving away all my handy dandy tips just like that on national TV. If they wanted to know what lesbians do, let them go through all the pain and anger and anguish we go through trying to get a woman, having to stare women down. Because that's how we get our women. We stare them down. And, and that's why so many of us have to wear glasses as we get older. All that staring across those smoky bars just wears your eyes right out. It's just not easy. There's so much to figure out. Like, who's a top? Who's a bottom? Come on, who can figure that out? I used to think, what are they talking about, pajamas? And now during this pandemic, we're eating so much, no one's getting on top. Ow, 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 how can you get on top of me with... My, when my stomach is full, it's just not going to work out. We have to do everything side to side now. Besides, now we're at the age and stage where eating, what we eat, has become such an issue. And I have to tell you, I don't want to just live off tofu. Besides, what is tofu? I throw my old sponges away. But I did listen to my friends. They were trying to make sure that I was just a little bit healthier. So I went 
to Whole Foods. We call it Whole Paycheck. I went there and I bought an organic chicken. Well, it was plumper, but it cost $45. And I had never paid $45 for a chicken before. So I took it home, put it in the middle of my living room and towed it to vacuum. For $45, I wanted it to do more than lay in my oven. Come on. But at least during this time, we're not doing the national sport of lesbians, which is camping. I have to tell you, I hate camping. I used to go to those women's festivals, AKA lesbian festivals. I was never prepared, never prepared. I hate camping. I think it's because I'm a New Yorker. We don't call it camping. We call it homeless. Besides, black people don't camp. We protest. <laughs> Okay, well, I never protested the camping. I just went there completely unprepared. I had no sleeping bag, no tent, no flashlight, and I had to go into that porta puta potty jane thing there. Oh my goodness, something furry skittered by, and I didn't pee for a week, people. It was terrible. But I have to tell you, today I know what Nirvana is. Nirvana is when you're in bed with your book. You're lover is by your side, your reading lamp is perfectly placed on your page, and your pillow is just right behind your back. So there you are, book, lover, lamp, and pillow. You look at her and you say, I could take her, but would I ever get that pillow just right behind my back again? So you look at her and you say, love you mean it, and you keep on reading your book. That's Nirvana, people. Thank you so much. See you soon. Karen Williams, everybody. Make some noise. Yeah, make some noise. She's got to hear you. She's all the way in Ohio. Thanks, Karen. I know you're on tour right now, so safe travels to your next gig in the kitchen. Look, tonight, if you want to share some love with our performers or just spread some queer cheer, hit us up on social media. We're at We're Funny That Way, and we're using the hashtag WFTW. So... Some of you may be thinking, well, we're funny that way, Festival. Well, what's that? Well, we're funny that way was the first international queer comedy festival ever, a charity event that's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for queer charities across Canada. It started as a comedy festival, then of course quickly morphed into more of a cabaret festival featuring a variety of genres. It's comedy, music, spoken word, storytelling, burlesque. You know what? Take a look. Here we are. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. There's a rain warning, and you queers made it out to the show. I can't believe it. Good for you. It makes me happy. If I pay my heart all gray, would you love me better? When trouble goes my way, do you love me better? I like her. And you know what? She's not all sourpuss. She can be girly. She can be, oh, hello, Justin. <laughs> Ooh. I'm Saucy Gaucho. I used to be a person called Susan Berkowitz. And then after an emotional evolution, I became Saucy Gaucho, and now here I am. I'm addicted to you. I'm addicted to your sex, and I'm addicted to your breath. Leah, I love you like the brother I actually like. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, no. So you're supposed to take night. You are. Good night. And those were just a few performers from a select year. Imagine what almost two decades of that has looked like. Fun! Now, like I said, I came out like 40 years ago, and one of the things I remember that made me cry like a baby, I actually was a baby when I came out, by the way, if you're trying to guess my age, I'm 42. One of the things I remember that made me cry like a baby were the parents marching with their kids at Pride. You could say it was a big deal back then, but you know what? Having the support of our folks is still a big deal. So next up, we welcome the very, very, very supportive Colin Mockery and Deb McGrath and their daughter, Kinley. Thanks, Maggie. Well, as we all know, it's been a weird time lately with everything going on, but that is not gonna stop us from enjoying our Pride Parade. We're gonna do a Pride Parade in our own house. Yeah. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. The whole family's involved. Woohoo! <laughs> but 
We have a very special guest of honor, our beautiful trans lesbian daughter, Kinley. She is the pride of the parade. Well, why are we even wasting time? Let's start Pride it's Parading. Better. Happy pride, pride. Parade. Pride, pride Parade. Pride Parade. Yeah. Happy, happy pride. pride. Uh, yeah, happy pride. No, uh, like, uh, like, you know, happy pride. Come on. Happy, happy um, pride. What, why don't you go ahead? S start without me. It's, uh, it's all good. But well, you're, no, you're, you're the, the guest, guest of, of honor. honor. Happy pride. Happy pride. Oh, she's coming. Here, she here, she here we go. Here she comes. Oh, oh. Oh, happy, happy pride. pride. Yeah, happy pride. Oh, God. Kinley, you love pride. Yeah, I love pride, but this is a little... Oh, my God, she's embarrassed by us. We've embarrassed her. She couldn't be embarrassed. We're the coolest parents I know. Look at us. Oh, okay, so oh here oh, she comes. comes. We're going to leave happy her a pride parade. Happy pride. Happy pride. Happy pride. She she in the kitchen. Okay. Happy pride. Getting an orange for pride. Orange. Getting an orange for pride. energy. Super, okay, super. she comes. Here she goes. Here we go. Oh, yeah, happy pride, happy pride. Listen, I I'm doing a pride Zoom call with some of my friends. Oh, oh okay, should we do that? Yeah, and I think you've set up such a beautiful thing down here. I think it's really great that you stick to that. Really, this is great. Great allyship. Okay. She said allyship, right? I'm not sure. <sighs> Look at the dogs. They're so disappointed. Oh, well. Oh, oh. oh. Happy, Happy Pride. Pride. And it gets me every time. Thanks, Colin, Deb, and Kinley. Moving on from that ball of love is the woman who gave me my start in comedy, one of the breakout stars of Orange is the New Black. She's a pioneer, an activist, an actor, comedian, jazz singer, the first out queer comic on late night TV and all around butch about town, my friend, Leah Delaria. Hey, Leah. Hey, Magdala. What's happening, Paisan? How you doing down there? You doing all right? Everything's good? I'm in my living room. Let's face it, you know, we used to play church basements and... Uh, and all kinds of crazy venues, and now here we are in our living rooms. We've come a long way, don't you think? Well, you have. You're in Canada. I'm at least still in New York. <laughs> so, Leah, a lot of things that people don't realize, and, and one of the things that I was, like, you know, in tears over was when you were uh, singing at Lincoln Center. A lot of people still to this day don't understand the kind of musician that you are, that you're this great jazz singer. Um, and... I don't know. I've always watched you and thought, I, I don't know how you do the scat thing. I mean, I do know how you do it, but I'm still not clear on, on musically how it's done. So I thought maybe you could just give me a little quick lesson in scat while we're here. No. Come on, Leah. All right, all right how about this? Scat for me. Will you just scat for me? Just give me one good scat. You gonna pay me the, like, thousands and thousands of dollars I usually get paid to sing for people? Please my special, please, for we're funny that way. All right. Jesus. Um, okay. So I think from listening, I could really actually kind of do it. I mean, you know, I, I, you make me sing all the time. So just help me out on this one. Give me a little scat lesson, a little lesson in scatting. That's precisely my point, Maggie. I've heard you sing, so I'm fairly certain I can't teach you. Come on, Leah. Ugh. All right, Maggie, I do have one more tip. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close my eyes. Think about the music. Yep. Okay, now just okay. immerse yourself in the music and go for it. Okay. Super duper doop up, zee doop up, doop up, sweep up, a doop up, a yabba dabba doop up, a wow, 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 Oh, man. Leah Delaria, everybody. It's a good thing we're such good friends.
So if you want to keep spreading the love on social media, remember our handle is at we're funny that way, hashtag WFTW. So these are indeed some surreal times. Now imagine you're a drag queen where life is kind of surreal to begin with. What does surreal squared actually look like? It looks like the queen of poutine, an overnight sensation, 19 years in the making, a well-traveled queen who's performed on the high seas and the low ones. She has literally performed all over the world and is now coming to us from, where is she right now? From lovely Kingston, Ontario, please welcome Miss Conception. Thanks, Maggie. Hey, everyone, it's Miss Conception, the poutine queen of Canada. That's Canada's national food, and I'm Canada's national treasure. Happy Pride, everyone. I've written a very special song just for you for Pride. Once there was a boy who was terrified. There was something hiding deep inside. Something needed to come out. All I wanted was to shout, I'm coming out. Everyone will notice me, here I am. A big drag queen. I'm wearing wigs and heels and lipstick and tucking in between. Slaying down the runway, performing for the gays. Wearing sequin dresses to brighten up your day. Come with me, the poutine queen. Just have a seat now. Gonna take you on a ride Gonna show you all my pride Do you wanna go? Come on and ride on my rainbow Yes, queen I've got my pride Treat others equally And we'll all stay alive I'm here to show my loving heart If we all do our part We've got our pride Thank you so much, Misconception. Nothing warms my heart more than a drag queen singing her heart out in her living room. I got another one of my favorite comics on the blower. She's one of the members of the hilarious Baroness Von Sketch Show. It's Carolyn Taylor. Hey, Carolyn, how you doing? Hey, Maggie, doing, uh, doing great. Really good to see you. You know, it's been, what, three months, something like that? Haven't left the house. Well, can you, can you even see me? Because of your hair, it's so different. Oh, my hair, you noticed. Really? I thought I looked the same. Yeah, here, let me just, I, if I part it kind of here and, and here, I can sort of see you both, both ways. Yeah, that's good. That works. Yeah, so anyway, Maggie, I'm super excited to be on your show. We're finding that way. You know, it's pride. You had asked me if I would um, cut my hair on camera. And you said, hey, could you cut it? And I said, do you want me to have my girlfriend cut it? Uh, you said, no, I want you to cut it. Uh, I said, that's a great idea. I said, it's a horrible idea. I was like, Maggie, stop harassing me. I don't want to do this. So anyway, um, here I am. I made time in my busy schedule. I have nothing else going on. Um, I'm going to do it, Maggie. I think this is going to be great for my career. Uh, it's going to be horrible for my career. I'll never work again. Um, so Maggie, how long do I have to cut my hair? Well, we're running a tight ship here. So how about a minute and a half? You can do a good haircut in a minute and a half. Minute and a half? Yeah. That was never part of the deal. OK. Just go for it. Uh, I'm going to use um, these scissors. These are kitchen scissors. That's all I have. Okay, here we go. 
Do not do this at home. I mean, do it at home. Whatever. What else do you have to do, right? OK, here we go. You ready, Maggie? Yeah, I'm ready. Do it. OK. Do it. Do, do it. it. Do okay, it. Here we go. All right, so first, I'm going to go like this. You know when you go to a hair salon and they say, cut into the thing? Oh, look. There, look. See, this is what they do. I watch when they're cutting. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I just snipped my finger. Okay, it's not bleeding. I'm okay. So there we go. All right, now we go like this. Here, this bit here, I call this the flop. It just kind of flops. I'm going to go like that. Oh, there we go. That's a little less flop. You know what? I'm going to use the blue kitchen scissors. These might be better. They're a bit smaller. How about this? Snap. How much longer do I have? Okay. So you do a little twirl. I've seen hairdressers do this too. Go, oh, snip. See, this is real hair, everybody. Uh, Don't cut the, the back. back. Cut the back. How about Don't that? Cut the Does that Somebody look good? I can't even see. Cut the back. I'm guessing. In her ear. Okay. Here we go. This is a good cause, right, Maggie? Ooh. This money is going somewhere to somebody who needs it, please. Okay. Hair. Oh wow. Actually, can you get a shot of my legs? Take a look. I am like, I might need a shave. Oh, I might this is need a shave. End okay. That's great. Here we go. Um, here's another snip. Oh. Okay. Oh, her girlfriend's Whoa. gonna kill Okay, there's me. some more. Uh, oh, there's another slice. Bangs, bangs, bangs. I can hear you all chanting bangs. Okay, give myself bangs. Oh, this is for no. a good cause, That's, right? Oh, that wow. Wasn't I am. Good. That, she can't fix that. <laughs> Actually, in the business, you're not supposed to change your hair. They say, don't change your hair or you lose the part. Okay, well, here we go. Oh, wow. I'm. Uh, this isn't bad, actually. Stop, Carolyn. Stop, stop, stop. I, 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 I gotta say, that was particularly frightening to watch. Hey, you know what? I look amazing. You did a good job cutting your hair. It actually looks like your hair did before COVID. Right, sorry, I'm just doing some touch-ups while we finish. I keep talking, yeah. <laughs> so uh, COVID never <laughs> happened. And here we go, great. Carolyn, I don't know what to say. That is what we call commitment to the craft because 100%, that was real. She did that. And uh, hashtag buy a wig. Yeah, hashtag buy a wig. It's looking good. There's a big gap in the back, isn't it? OK, I'll deal with the gap later. OK, bye, Maggie. Oh. I'm bald in the back. There's nothing. In the bye, Carolyn. I can't bye. stop. Bye. And now for a shout out for a woman who kind of needs no introduction. She's a Tony, Emmy, and Drama Desk Award winner, SCTV original, and in my humble opinion, a national treasure, Please welcome the hilarious Andrea Martin. Hi, everybody. It's Andrea Martin. I want to say happy pride to all of you in the LGBTQA community. I am an A for ally and an O for once in college. It's great to be here at the We're Funny That Way Festival, which looks a lot like my own living room. Look at that. We've come so far, and yet we ended up back home. I love you all. Happy pride. And here's to being able to live our lives as the us we really are. Thank you so much, comedy legend Andrea Martin. Remember, our social handle again, at We're Funny That Way, hashtag WFTW. Keep spreading the queer cheer, people. And you know what? Why not follow all of our performers on social, too? They'd really like that. Funny, I'm funny, I'm funny. We're funny that way. Hey, hey, hey. Our next performer kind of does it all. She's a comic, a lyricist, a writer, an actor, a poet, a producer, and a proud Canadian. The one thing she can't do, though, is live stream from her apartment in New York City, because apparently Kate Rigg lives in a concrete fortress. Hey, Kate, uh, we understand you can't get enough signal to do an actual live performance for us, but, but thank you for being... Wait a minute, are you in your laundry room? Yeah, hi, Maggie. Yes, this yeah, is the I, best yeah. place that I can get a signal in the whole... Hello Kitty, racial stereotyping, can you hear me? No, not really, you're breaking up. Just let me move over here. I, I feel comfortable in this. I think it'll be better in the white laundry, Amy Cooper, Kim Kardashian, gender conforming. Are you, is this good? Yeah, I, I think that's okay. Uh, Kate, I mean, you're in New York City. I, people might not okay, know great. that. So what's it like for you in, what's it like for you in New York City right now? Oh, man. Well, it's pandemic pandemonium, as you've probably heard, caused by Twitler and his daughter wife, Ivanka Braun. I mean, it's <laughs> been crazy here. We're at the epicenter, you know? 
And as a as an Asian North American person, a proud Canadian person, you know, I've witnessed what they're calling a 900% rise in violence and bullying and and targeting of Asian Americans. And then of course now we've got even more civil unrest. It's all it's basically a shit show, Maggie. It's a shit show here. I can't even. And it was Asian Heritage Month last month. Did you know that? It was also of I did. National Masturbation <laughs> Month, but it was Asian Heritage Month. And the attack, it's just I, I, so, I it's so much to take in with the coronavirus and, oh, hold on a second. I don't know if you know this, it's seven o'clock now and they're starting, we go out in the street, uh, the people are in the street, so I just yeah. gotta lean out the window and say thank you to the first responders. Can, just give me a second, Maggie, hold yeah. on a second. Hold on, okay. I gotta do my thing first. I'm just gonna All put right. you down for one second, okay? I gotta do my... Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I got this on the subway from an Asian person. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. Okay. Hey, come away from it's the window. Can you get away from the window? You're a little. Sorry. You're you're too close to. All right. Okay, we're All good. All right. Well, thank you for talking to us, Kate. Um, I'm sorry that you can't do a performance. I, I wish people could see you. You're so talented. Well, wait, um, but Maggie, I appreciate you Maggie, joining wait, us. wait. Maggie, no. Stop what? talking for a second. Listen. You have tape on me from Happy Lucky Golden Tofu Panda Dragon Good Time Fun Fun Show, which is the show I did last year at the festival. So I want you yeah, to play yes, the nail yeah. salon song, okay? Play it because okay. all those nail, Asian nail salon ladies, you know, they live here in New York City. I, I, I can't stop thinking about them and my heart goes out to them. So I okay. want to do this as an homage to them, okay? Okay, and that's a beautiful piece and uh, we're gonna do that. So thank you, Kate Rigg. Please just come away from the window. I came to country long ago, maybe not so long ago. I thought I'd marry Mr. Tom Cruise or Mr. Russell Crowe. Someone told me there was lots of work. Someone told me life was fair. Someone told me learn to file a nail or maybe learn to sweep up hair. Well, I don't mind scraping callus down. I don't mind your stupid cat photos. You're looking at Candy Crush on your phone. You never have me in your home. When you ask my name, you don't meet my eye. I say it's Mary, but that's a lie. I hold your hand in my hand. My name is Long Fuang Ann. I want a chance. I want a change. I want to feel alive. I sit quietly and file you down But still inside I rise, still inside I fight You might say, oh my god, Mary, I love your ring. Is that jade? Does it mean good luck? Do you care if we do a French mani petty Lady, I don't give a fuck. So anyways, let me tell you about my work. Let me tell you about my boyfriends. <laughs> my handbag cost as much as your whole life. Lady, I could stab you with a knife. Late at night, I go home to Queens. I ride in a shared van. I eat craft macaroni and cheese. And I Skype with Vietnam. I send money home every month so I never have nice things. I hold your hand in my hand. My name is Long Fuang An. chance I want to feel alive. I sit quietly and file you down, but still inside I rise, still inside I fight. Maybe I'll have my own apartment, maybe I'll have my own car, maybe I'll go on American Idol, someone will make me a star. I wash your feet and paint your hands, I save the money that I can. I hold your hand in my hand, my name is Long Fong Ann. I want to change, I want a chance, I want to feel alive. I sit quietly and file you down, but still inside I rise, still inside I
That was beautiful, Kate. Now, how about a little comedy from me? Hey, everybody, and welcome to I Just Want to Say This About That. I'm Maggie Casella, but you already knew that. All right, why don't we start with something light, like a wee lesson in what not to market during a pandemic. How about a nail polish that smells like tacos, Cheetos, or donuts? Yes, in a time when all you ever hear is don't touch your face, these schmucks have actually invented something you apply to your hands that smells like comfort food or your sweet puppy's feet. Mm. I don't know, it almost feels like bait to me. Cause think about it, who wears nail polish? Mostly women and gender queers. So, you know, conspiracy theory, is this how they're gonna get us? And crikey, the state's right now, eh? Pandemic, unemployment of millions of people and gigantic civil unrest, it's been a long time coming. And while I appreciate all my friends from down south now constantly telling me how smart he was for moving to Canada 26 years ago, I cannot take credit for being some kind of political Nostradamus who put my hand on my chin back then and said, hmm, I think two decades from now the U.S. is going to go to hell in a handbasket. I'm out of here. Because actually that's not what happened. It was about a girl. So you know what? Not smart. Just into the shiny lady. And let me tell you, it actually took me a while to adjust when I moved here. I mean, talk about culture shock. Absolute true story. My first visit here, I stepped on a guy's foot and he said, I'm sorry. I was like, what? First time I drove here, again, true story. Someone let me merge and I was like, what's happening? Is this a trap? Because I didn't know the Canadian driving hand signals, which were like, I only knew the one American driving hand signal and rooting for sports teams. So much different here, especially like international events, like the World Cup. I mean, people drive around in cars wrapped in flags of the country they're cheering for. I mean, cars wrapped in, in Brazilian flags or French flags or Mexican flags. Can you imagine doing that in the States? I mean, can you imagine draping your car in anything but an American flag? If you did, you might as well put a bumper sticker on the back that says, please pull me over and send me back to the country I've never actually been to. So these days when Canadians ask me where I grew up, I just tell them I'm gay. Because at this point, most Canadians don't care if you're queer. But if you tell them you're from the States, they're like, what is wrong with you people? And explain the electoral college. And I can't. So, you know, I'm from gay. And speaking of gay, did you see that the latest incarnation of Clifford the Big Red Dog has a character named Samantha who has two mommies named Dr. and Ms. Mulberry? Yay, Clifford! Yeah, right. Of course, there can't be inclusion without intrusion. So enter the One Million Moms. You remember the One Million Moms. They sprang up, I think, back in 2012 when they, I know, J.C. Penney hired Ellen to be their spokesperson. At the time, I was saying, there's no way there are a million moms. They're probably just six pearl clutchers with a WordPress page and a Gmail account. As it turns out, I was wrong. As we recently discovered, they're actually just one pearl clutcher with a WordPress page and a Gmail account. Poor thing, come on, man. Imagine you spent the last almost decade of your life losing your mind every time someone writes a script that shows diverse families or inclusion. Why isn't there a warning that Clifford's vet is a lesbian? Honey, I have a clue for you. Like every third or fourth vet is queer. So I don't know, maybe don't have any pets. And we all agree by now that anybody with that much noise and upsetness about queer stuff is probably just, I don't know, one very weak drink away from accidentally tripping and falling face down in the lap of her best friend, Karen. By the way, I decided if one person could be a million moms, then I've decided I'm gonna be one million mo's. So I bought the domain name and the website where you can now sign up and join me and queers from all over the world to gather and say, here's a million people who all agree. Inclusion good, intrusion bad, and love is way more powerful than hate. Go on, sign up. All right, please welcome our next performer, a festival favorite, a favorite of mine, the supremely talented Gavin Crawford. I better do this quick, mother's still sleeping. Mother didn't want me to participate in this. So we had quite a fight. But I wanted to do it, I think it's important, especially with everything that's going on right now. I mean, pride and you can't go anywhere. Nobody can do anything, isn't it awful? It's just awful. And we all have to wear masks. I don't mind really for mother's protection. I'm wearing a mask right now. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? That's how I like to wear it, high up on the shoulder, you know, and away from the face. I don't wanna cover up a smile. I think it's a doggone dirty shame to cover up a smile. I really do. I think this is the best way to wear a mask. I think this ensemble, this is the best costume for the pandemic. I really believe that, I really do. 
Sorry about the mess. I started reorganizing a few weeks ago and then I just kind of, I don't know, lost the spirit for it. I don't know how I'm keeping my sanity right now. I think it's because I can still see my friends. Luckily, they're all raccoons, except for Barry. Barry's a badger that crawled in through the chimney, took up residence in the foyer. He's not very personable, but he loves music. I sing to him every evening from the alcove in the kitchen. I get no cook from my champagne. Oh, you should see. Every time I sing that, he stops hissing for almost the entire verse. Anyway, I just wanted to say happy pride. Mother doesn't like pride. I shouldn't say that, but she doesn't. I think it's because of Gould. Gould is mother's accompanist. Yeah, she was mad about him. Absolutely mad for him, but he wasn't interested. The only thing Gould ever wanted to tickle was the Ivories. They were a couple of brothers from the next town over. Over Danny and Teddy Ivory. Oh my God, they were handsome. Danny Ivory actually asked me on a date once, but mother wouldn't have it. He was a conservative. Mother said, I will not have some conservative in my kitchen drinking all the milk. And that was that. I love pride. I used to go every year when you could still go places. Dancing, marching, glory holds the works. I was on a pride float. I don't know if you know that. Did you know that? Yeah, I was Miss T.D. Bank. I stood right at the front of the float, passing out low fee checking accounts to all the gays. Oh, it was wonderful. Did you know Pride started as a protest? I think it's important to remember that. If you don't remember things, you're liable to forget. That's what I always say. Yeah. A black trans woman, Rosetta Stone. No. Marsha P. Johnson stood up against the police, and that's how it started. I think that's important, especially to remember right now with all this civil disobedience. That's how things change. You have to stand up for something. I really believe that. I really do. Anyway, I better go. Mother's up and she needs breakfast and we're out of cat food. I don't know what I'm gonna serve her. Happy Pride. I'm coming, Mother! As always, thanks, Gavin. Oh, look at that. It's our social hashtag reminder again, reminding me to remind you to get active and let all your friends know about this special. Remember, we're at We're Funny That Way, hashtag WFTW. Now, one of the great things about doing the We're Funny That Way Festival every single year is getting to know new, funny, queer talent who also use their powers for good. Our next performer is all of those things and more. He's the first ever queer, black, Canadian comedian to release a comedy album and the co-founder of the all-queer, all-people-of-color ethnic rainbow show. Plus, he's super funny. Please welcome Brandon Ash Muhammad. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Maggie. Hi. Hi. Hi, CBC Jam. Hi, We're Funny That Way Festival. It is I, Brandon Ash Muhammad, the one and only. Um, so, yes, my name is Brandon Ash Muhammad. Mm -hmm. I like all my names because when you read them, the last one is a twist no one sees coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's always like, Brandon Ash, who's this nice white Muhammad? Uh, even though my last name is Muhammad, my family is not like that Muslim. I don't know what that means. Like, We've actually only been to a mosque once. And it was in the video game Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. Crazy, I know. Um, my quarantine has been very interesting. I've been staying with my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother is Trinidadian. That makes me Trinidadian. That's how it works. If you don't know what Trinidad is, Trinidad is this small Caribbean island right across from Venezuela. Uh, our biggest exports are coconuts, oil, and coconut oil. So we're like really rich right now, like so rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're also known for our literature, mm -hmm. mainly the 21st century poet, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. If you guys didn't laugh at that, you support Doja Cat. Mm -hmm. I hope you know that. Uh, my grandmother is very interesting. Um, she raised me. And one of my favorite things about her is how vain she is and how like, weird she twists things like recently her pupils started turning blue and she got very excited about it she was just like my eyes are turning blue my 
eyes are turning black. So we went to the optometrist and she was just like, doctor, doctor, guess what's new? My eyes are black. And he was just like, Brenda, you have the cataracts. Like, um, it's been interesting. My quarantine has been very interesting. I have just been, again, staying with my grandmother and rediscovering my childhood. Like, I've been watching things like Pokemon and Cheetah Girls, you know, just reliving 2007. Uh, I recently rediscovered the show Arthur. Uh, you guys remember that? And I've been doing a lot of research on Arthur, doing a background check on him. And I found out that Arthur is an aardvark, and aardvarks are from Africa. So this leads me to my bigger question. Um, can Arthur say the N-word? And this leads me to my even bigger question. Who on Arthur would I be comfortable with saying the N-word? I made a list. Okay. Uh, number one, Francine, because she can play the drums. Mm -hmm. Number two, Binky, because he kind of looks like Timbaland. Mm -hmm. And number three, Buster, because his name is Buster. I understand I've given you guys a lot to think about, and I hope that you and your families in quarantine can watch Arthur through a new lens. And I want that lens to be who on this show can say the N-word. Thank you guys so much. I've been Brandon Ash Muhammad. I love you all. Bye. So funny. Thank you, Brandon Ash Muhammad. Our next performer is another P-word, Pioneer. The first out trans man to be signed by a major record label, Lucas Silvera is a singer, songwriter, activist, and founder of the band The Clicks. I I'd say he makes songwriting look like a walk in the park, but these days, a walk in the park is really hard. Hey, back off, that's not six feet! So let's just say he makes songwriting look easy. Performing his beautiful ballad, Dream Lover, please welcome Lucas Silvera. Hey Maggie, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. Um, and I'm going to be playing the song that you requested. So this is just for you. This is called Dream Lover. Close your eyes and go to sleep.
Thank you, Lucas Silvera. I feel like one of those ladies at a Tom Jones concert because I'm about to throw my Calvins at the screen. Is that wrong? Our next performer is smart and funny in four languages. She's bold, fearless, an activist for the queer community and her native Nicaragua. Please welcome the flawless Martha Chavez. Thank you, Maggie Casella, for having me in your show. Uh, I always love we are funny that way. And thank you for letting me be funny in the time of pandemia. We are here in my house because we can't play it outside. Comedians cannot play outside because you know what they say, laughter is the best medicine, but not in this case, because when you laugh, you're transmitting moist. And when we do comedy, I'm speaking moistly. So now we are in my house. You know, when, when the lockdown started, I felt the same feeling that I have felt several times before in my life. When the earthquake in Nicaragua, emergency situation. With the military curfew in Nicaragua, emergency situation, you could not go out. If you went out after six o'clock when we had the military cur curfew, the National Guard would shoot you. And my mother took advantage of the situation. She would say, ah, you don't want to clean your room? You're going to the park at dusk. Anyway, in the, our household, in my uh, house, I am the one that is the germophobe, but I am the one that goes shopping because I know how to deal with emergency situations. Every time I go to the supermarket, I go with my mask, I go with my shield, I have gloves, I have all sorts of hand sanitizers, and I hate the people that doesn't. I go to the supermarket singing taranta, taranta, taranta. When I get there and then I get out, I come home and, and my partner asks me, what did I do? Who did I see? It's, it's like if I were Christopher Columbus and she sent me for spices, but I discovered a supermarket and claimed it as mine. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a total different way of living. And now there are protests outside. I wanted to go to the protest, but I couldn't. You know, I've been protesting since I'm three years old on the shoulders of my father. And I will cry and I will cry because of the tear gas. I will cry. But this time I didn't go to the protest because I don't want COVID-19 and Trump to win this battle. People have been criticizing the prime minister of Canada because he didn't pick a fight with that moron, with the orange moron, because he's going to cut our cable. The Americans are going to cut our cable. And, and being in the pandemia bohemia here that we are, we cannot afford not to have our Netflix. So I'm glad the way he answered. I, um, I'm glad that we have been saving lives by staying at home. People were complaining, oh, they're forcing us to be home. I'm glad, I'm glad to be home. I miss the road. I miss to wake up in a forgotten little hotel in the middle of nowhere in Fairview, Alberta. But I love also to be home. And I love also to, to be helping people to get better. Because that's what we are doing in here. And um, in the meantime, I've been gaining weight. Everybody has been gaining weight, but I was in the keto diet and I started gaining weight again because I say to myself, what if I get the corona and I didn't eat the fucking cookie? What then? So, and and I, I've been, uh, I, I, I am Marta Chavez and I thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Maggie Casella, for, for doing this. Thanks to the CBC and to the man who came to put everything at home here to Tom. And uh, happy Pride! Happy Pride! I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta go to the supermarket. ta -da -da. ta -da -da. Martha Chavez, everybody, make some noise. Come on, make some noise. Thank you, you're a great audience. Our next guest has written two songs that are anthems for youth and queer movements. Her song, Mirror Me, landed her on a New York Pride stage with Lady Gaga. Yeah, that Lady Gaga. Please help me welcome singer, songwriter, and two-spirit activist, Shawnee. Hey, pretty lady. How are you? Maggie. <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Where are you right now in the world? I am in Edmonton, Alberta, enjoying the wind. <laughs> it's really windy here, but it's beautiful also. So... 
Yeah, well, talk to me a little bit about that uh, Pride stage and um, Lady Gaga thing. How was, uh, how was that? Was that weird? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, she surprised everyone. At, um, nobody knew she was coming. And so we were backstage and I was one of the last performers. And so they kind of emptied out the backstage and nobody knew why, but one of the security guards came up to me and they were like, so Lady Gaga's on her way and we're gonna tell you this because she has to take your spot. So you can sing a song still because you came all the way out to New York. So you can still sing a song, but she's gonna take your spot. So I was like one of the only people knew that she was on her way. Anyway, so she did come. She sang the anthem and she did take my spot, but then she sat on the side stage and listened to me perform Mirror Me. And uh, we had a little chat and she waved goodbye, said good job. And she was super down to earth and used the porta potty just like everybody else, like downtown New York City. And um, she was really chill and it was, it was nice to see that. Do you, do you think that, uh, that more people saw you because of that? Like, did you feel like it gave you a bump or, uh, you know, anything like that? Yeah, that was pretty huge for sure. And just like the crowd in general, um, when she showed up, it was like, it was a whole different ball game because it's Lady Gaga and everybody was, uh, it was pretty intense. <laughs> I just think, uh, uh, the world needs to know about you and you should be a, a worldwide star. But that's just me. I'm a bit of a, of a fan girl. So I happen to also maybe know that you were a Shania Twain impersonator when you were uh, younger. True or false? <sighs> Maggie, why? <laughs> why? Sorry, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, and I put it in my bio. Like It was like my claim to like when I first, okay, I was 12. To be fair, I was 12, but when I first, uh, I made like a little resume when I was 12 and I like would hand out my, uh, my performance resume to like this, my little city, you know, the office of the city and like try to get little Shania Twain jobs. And, but that was my first, um, experience with like live performing. And, um, actually I did an interview with, um, CBC, I think it was last year. And he's like, so, so this resume, I found this resume online and and then I worked hard to get it off because it was like really embarrassing. It was my 12 year old resume that was online. Come on. I love that you had a resume as a 12 year old and someone found it. I, I would leave it there. I just would. Okay, so I also read that like your musical taste was influenced by Yanni, Beethoven and Melissa Etheridge. Okay, so if you could have all three of them at a dinner party, what would that look like? And what would you, <laughs> what would you ask them? Oh my gosh, that would be so cool actually. Um, I don't even know. It'd just be like this really intense jam session. Um, a lot of my writing has come from, you know, influenced by all three of those people, like lyric wise, Melissa Etheridge, but like, um, you know, my ballads and stuff. I feel like just that, in that intense feeling that you get from classical music is just, speaks to me and it got me through a lot um you know growing up so I don't know that would it would just be like this creative this intense creative experience I think but also like really <laughs> chaotic story of my life a story of all of our lives my friend um all right so you're going to yeah. uh yeah. first of all thank you so much for for being our closing act and bringing to us a song that you just just released uh called don't go and you're gonna sing that for us now um do you want to just tell us a little bit how you came to this song yeah so don't go is a new song it's brand new it's available everywhere and it's kind of a different vibe than what i think people are used to hearing from me it's got a little bit of an 80s synth vibe and that happened organically i fell in love when we were in studio we were writing another song and this synth sort of came up and it just it um we were vibing with it, so we, we came up with Don't Go on the spot, and uh, I hope you like it. You had me at hello, hey now go, come on, let's go. I know what you're looking for, spinning fast, we'll take it slow. Come on over, baby, we can talk all through the night. You've been taking up the space, running circles in my mind. Hold on. Take 
up all night You've been taking up the space Running circles in my mind Just don't leave me Shout out to Two Spirit people and thank you, Maggie. Um. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Shawnee, for leaving us with that incredible performance. And with that, my friends, we say thank you for watching and thank you to all of our amazing guests. Remember, they really, really like it when you follow them on social media and us at We're Funny That Way. We're using the hashtag WFTW for this special. But before we go, we just all want to say, Happy Pride! You had me at hello. Hey now, girl, come on, let's go. I know what you're looking for. Spinning fast, we'll take it slow. Come on over.